random rules. Long may she reign. Dicey! Shh, my child. You'll see it now. Hey c'est bien de Gambuland, j'espère que vous allez bien, ça fait depuis un petit moment que je voulais le faire ce jeu, Lost in Random, qui est sorti le 10 septembre 2021, je sais pas pourquoi je l'avais pas fait à l'époque, euh, sûrement trop de sorties à ce moment là, mais je me suis mis à jour, surtout que franchement il est super sympa, avec cette petite touche à la Tim Burton, on peut pas passer à côté de la référence, les graphismes, les personnages, l'ambiance et la musique nous rappellent forcément les films du réalisateur, le gameplay aussi très original et ça m'a fait comme une espèce de bouffée d'air frais, on n'est pas du tout habitué, mais ça fait plaisir, Personne moi j'aimerais bien un épisode 2. Ah et pour info le jeu fait partie du programme EA Originals et il est disponible sur EA Play. Allez finis la parlotte place au jeu je n'ai plus qu'à vous souhaiter un bon visionnage et si ça vous plaît n'oubliez pas d'acheter le jeu. Bisous Long ago In a land you might remember from your dreams, the power of randomness was celebrated by all. Those with dice would roll them to shape their destinies, and the bravest few would challenge each other in games of chance, epic tournaments, in which their very lives would hang in the balance. was in the era of the dice wielders and like all eras it too would come to an end fading into legend and mystery our story begins later in Wandcroft a small village populated entirely by people who have never once been dealt a fair hand attention warners I am the queen, and my dark dice will decide your fate. Random rules! See that, Bernard? You're a sixer. Oh, wow! I'm gonna live in the queen's dream palace for the rest of my- <laughs> Nuh-uh, you're a dirty three, doomed to a life of fighting and misery. That's cheating! Well, so is having an almighty dice, snake eye. <laughs> Stop you guys, wrap this up. We should really get going. It's just a game, sis. Even I promised mom and dad to get you home. The queen! It's the queen! Hey, was that really necessary? Come on, hurry up! Now we really have to run! Behind me, sis. We've got to run home and hide. Now!
Nothing to it, sis. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. Random rules! Random rules! That's Nanny Fortuna. Works for the Queen, kidnapping children for her. Kidnapping? And so the Queen decreed that any child who had reached the age of 12 would be given the grand honor of rolling her one true dice. Which would reveal to them their place in the world of random. Check out this secret portal. Bring me all of the children. Ah, it's uh, an old crawl space. It works for us. Nice work, Bernie. Let's go. For the Queen's wisdom is as wide as her power, which is infinite. Which makes it very easy for all of you to do what she said. Since she is and ever shall be correct. And though you may feel a twinge of emotion when you watch your children move to their new years, ensure that you are feeling the correct emotion, which is joy. Joy that the Queen's plan for us is so grand. Joy that her one true dice has deigned to fix the fate of your offspring. And George, yes, George. Even, Odd, where have you been? We've been worried sick. I'm sorry, Dad, I tried to. There's no time. She'll be here any minute. Quick, get down. Happy birthday. Oh, even. And I got a present for you. It's so cute. Make a wish. And the Queen said, every child of 12 years shall throw this supreme dice, and so it was. For random is fair, random prevails, and random rules. Random rules! Be grateful, child, that the Queen herself is here for your special day. Now roll the dice, and let's see what kind of person you truly are. <gasps> no. It had been settled. <laughs> At least, she'll be a sixer. Stop it! No, even and so, Odd's destiny came to be living by the side of the Queen up in the Sixer's palace, where, it was said, all dreams came true. But Even's nightmare was just beginning.
more than a year had passed since her sister had been taken away from her, and in all that time, even had never dreamed like that before. stared at the toy, feeling the ground tilt beneath her. That was the exact same stuffed animal she'd given Odd on the night she was taken. Even knew her parents would be heartbroken when they woke and found her missing. But she had to go. She had to know. seemed to keep its distance from even. When she got closer, it moved further away. It was leading her somewhere. Oof, easy there, even. What are you doing out so darn late? You're running like the old witch Uma put a curse on you. Ah, that spark in your eye tells me you're not fooling around. I remember being your age once, I do. And I know how important imagination can seem. All right, all right, I'll get out of your way. But don't tell your parents you saw me, deal? And stay away from the outskirts. Wait up, please, wait up! This was Onecroft, the world in which even and her small family live. Like all Wonners, they hauled junk for the cargo ships that came and went in the night. All this labor was done for reasons that were never clearly understood. The Queen willed it, and no one would dare oppose her, and that was enough for everyone. Everyone, that is, except even. What are you doing here, anyway? Yeah, even. Are your parents letting you out after dark now? Honestly, even, I gotta say, I'm impressed. Never thought you had it in you to break a precious rule. Don't be mean, Lucky. I'm not mean. That was a compliment. I think you're cool, even. Even if you should listen to your parents more. My parents say listening to them is the coolest thing of all. You guys are so touchy. I couldn't sleep. My 12th birthday is coming up. Mine too. Gonna get to roll the dice when it comes. I'm gonna be a sixer. I know it. I'll be saying bye to all you bloobs and hi to the riches of Sixtopia. I'm not a bloob. I'm a star. My mom says so. I'm not a bloob either. Uh, what's a bloob? Well, that's just her bad luck. Not the sort of thing I've ever had to worry about. Really? How come? Because my name is Lucky and... You meant how come even thinks it didn't work out, Lucky? <laughs> yeah, right. Like a sixer would ever care about her one -er. Please. It could happen. You don't know. I think it sounds mysterious. I love mysteries. Have fun with your cool mystery, even. See you later. <gasps> there. You saw it, didn't you? There it was again. Whatever that spirit wanted, it seemed to involve bringing even here. But why? Random rules, even. Random rules. That strange figure even knew that her fate was changing, that her future was suddenly filled with unknowns, and she also had the distinct feeling that she wouldn't be back home for 
quite some time. could barely make out what the ghostly figure was. It was beautiful, inscrutable, and there seemed to be a sorrow to her. There was no time to think, even was either going home to her parents without answers and with even more questions than before, or she was getting on that boat. She felt a pull, beckoning towards something new. Oh, those are some nice cards you have there, kiddo. Well, look at these! Oh, these used to be everywhere, you know that? Oh, folks did trade them on the regular. Used to have quite a collection myself. I got, I got them straight from the factories in five tropolis where they made them, you know. Mint in books! <laughs> of course, that was before the war. A lot changed that night. Oh, we're still dealing with the consequences. The Queen! She distorted it all. Turned us from good, honest folks into... Uh, into whatever this is now. Only most don't remember it. Only me, it feels like sometimes. No, oh, no, no, no. You don't get to come here. This is my reserve spot. You get your own. No, go away. We're all trying to hide, kid. Now leave. This is Herman's hidey hole. My little stowaway chamber. My realm of ad lubescence that you're not invited in. It's my ticket out of this muddy town. Oh, for the love of... Uh, fine, fine, you little, little guilt tripper. I'll let you in. Oh, but before I do, we got ourselves some house rules. One, be quiet. Two, don't touch anything. And three, be quiet and don't touch anything. <laughs> The moment she'd let herself think about it, even realized she was actually exhausted. Tonight alone, she'd seen a ghost run away from home and boarded a ship traveling somewhere deep into the unknown heart of Random. Would she ever return? It didn't matter. Odd was the only thing that mattered. With her sister's name on her lips, even fell into a deep slumber.
Hello, Even. You're home. It's where you belong. What's in trouble? Trouble is odd. At least she'll be a sixer. A wanna is a wanna. Is a wanna is a wanna. When you're right, you're right. It's a dangerous world out there. Listen to your mother, Even. Stay here. It's safe here. We'll never leave you again. Not ever. Not ever, even. We'll always be here, even. You'll always be her, even. Her desires are odd. It's the only way she'll learn. Go. Even if you're lost. The Queen will find you. Think they... they were denying you your future, robbing you of your true destiny. You're finally home. Wake up! Wake up, girl! No, 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 no. This whole time ship's falling apart. Today's a difficult day for you, Herman. Take one of these bad boys! <laughs> As even lost sight of Herman, she realized she'd also lost sight of her last connection to home. Okay. Still alive. Uh, I can work with that. As long as I don't land on water, I should be able to work with that. <sighs> Find time to remember I don't know how to swim. She hoped desperately that she'd land somewhere near Sixtown, but the wind and the fates had very different plans for her indeed. She couldn't yet understand it, but even had landed in the middle of something exceptional. These were the ruins of a time long past, and the magic she could almost sense in the air wasn't about to give up its secrets that easily.
hey, um, are, are you okay? Are you, uh... Let's go! Hello! Okay, uh, well, thanks for saving me back there. You were really, well, heroic. Right, <laughs> okay, talking to a dice. I better get going. You should too. This place is really dangerous. <laughs> You don't just take things from people. Ugh, fine. You could hold on to them, I guess. Just don't digest them. Watch out, Dice. I think these machines are coming alive too. Oh, it was clear that these were no ordinary cards. And Dicey was no ordinary dice. Something extraordinary was awakening. Whoa! What in the... You can do that! Everton didn't understand what was happening to her and her new dice friend. But she didn't need to, for there was another, more obvious truth that she understood completely. She was truly and inarguably kicking robot butt! Incredible team, and as long as I'm going to be talking to you, I should probably know your name. Uh huh, right. Well, how about if I just call you Dicey? Perfect. Well, let's see if we can find a way out of this place, Dicey. These colossi were indeed colossal. Things were looking grim. And while I know it's always disappointing when you, what you thought was a novel turns out to be a very short story, all I can do is apologize.
I've always been here. Snake-eyed freak! Dirty one, daughter! You don't belong here, Wonner. Go back to your filth where you belong. Look at the dirty trash, Cyclops. <laughs> My parents told me how Wonners live. Like animals. Look at the dirty trash, Cyclops. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! What is going on here? The other kids, they... They said I was a... Filthy Wonner. She is! She's not a sixer, like us. Oh, ho, ho. the dice doesn't lie, children. Y yeah, but, but she was just lucky. She's a wanna. You can smell it on her. Oh, you think you're smarter than the black dice? Um, uh, I mean, no, I, I just... Oh, so now you're saying she is a sixer after all. So you've lied to me either way. I mean... Lying should be punished, Odd. Don't you agree? You don't have to. I was just... Now, now, there's no room for pity. Either everything's fair or nothing is! Ugh, a water. Off to the garbage for you. I'm not garbage. Well, agree to disagree, love. <gasps> What's this? A lunchbox? Ha! A living lunchbox! <coughs> Monster! I'm gonna tell the Maya! See where here is, Dicey. Even had a feeling. Call it a hint that her new friend Dicey would be able to open that door for her. All it would take would be a roll or two. I was just going to say that, but what did it want? Did you hear? The new moon is finished! It is wonderful to finally look up at this sky and see Good morning, world! It's a beautiful day! My favorite kind! Any second now. Oh, curse it too. <sighs> Though I suppose you can't have the sweet without the sour. Attention to town. Now hear this. The queen is wrong, but true. I repeat, the queen is wrong, but true. Her will is now manifest. Long may she reign. Random rules. Oh, a two! What a delightful... <sighs> Way to make a perfectly awful day even worse. <sighs> Another dreary day, everyone. Just muddle through this horrid life until death finally claims us. Oh, kid! You want crispy twigs? Kids love crispy twigs! 
Behold, the door to Three Town. Alas, the door was sealed shut, and only a roll of a three would open it. But Evans' friend was one dot short. He could only roll a one and a two, and even would have to find a way to upgrade him. Strange. What's up with these little guys? I wonder if they could fix you. As she looked up, even began to realize that Two Town's name was easily twice as literal as she'd suspected. They seemed to be constructing a second town. <laughs> I've had enough of this job. Ouch. Huh? <laughs> oh. A dice? Where did you come from, little one? My father? Let him go! That's right, you better smarten up and look where you're going, or I... Well, <laughs> you're very angry for someone so small. I'm not small. You're a big clumsy giant who goes around sitting on my friends. Again, I, I apologize. It, it was an accident. <sighs> All right, apology accepted. Look, I'm trying to find my sister, and I've got to get through that big old door. Name Seymour. I haven't seen your sister, though. The thing is, I don't see too much of anything these days, and not since the nanny confiscated most of my eyes. Two of them for two town, she said. Anyway, once she gave my eyes to the mayor, they disappeared. I haven't heard any news about them since. The Civil War and Freedom, you know, tried to desert it and got sentenced for treason. I wasn't doing any good there anyway. <laughs> I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> but enough about that. What's up with this dice? I haven't seen a real one in years. I see you're missing a couple of pips, little one. If you're going to go anywhere, you are new, aren't you? A uh, door to three towns forever locked. Uh, keeps the district separate by order of the queen. You'd need to roll a three to open it. And since nobody has a dice anymore, well, they stay closed. But your little friend's so close to three. I could fix you, but... But I can't. Not unless I get my missing eyes back. Oh, if only a brave dice wielder would find it in her heart of glory to begin a quest to find and return my eyes. <sighs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm certain the nanny passed my eyes on to the mayor. Of course, if she'd given them to the right mayor, getting them back would be easy, but she gave them to that upside down one. <sighs> what a nightmare. So, yeah, find my eyes? I can definitely help you. So, you'll help out old Seymour? <laughs> be careful with that two-faced mayor. Okay, if you need me, I'll be over at the town square, near the door to freedom. Even decided that she felt a kinship with this sad large monster. He'd been hurt by the same people who took her sister. She had the sense she was the only one who could help him. And she had the sense Seymour could end up helping her, too. Mm hmm, low down there. Well met, even. At last, even had arrived at the mayor of Two Town, the administrator of this land, and the alleged thief of Seymour's eyes. Or at least, even had arrived at his lower extremities. What brings you to my office today, even? Mine a twister for some coaling guys. Grind your... Duh. Why don't you take the elevator and step into my office, even? It'll be easier to talk. Yes, yes, hello. Step into my office, such as it is. Don't mind the thing sticking out of my hat. He's... How best to explain this? 
I had a lot on my mind about this upside downtown project. It was starting to get out of hand and then one day he was just there. I've always been here. Right. We'd better keep our voices down even, if we are to keep this conversation away from his ears. I'm sure you noticed the changes here even. Our personality is becoming personified now. I don't know how to fix this town even, and I don't know why I'm telling you this. Oh, I suppose you just have a face one can trust. In any case, what brings you to the mayor today? What's that, little girl? You want to know how our first-past-the-post democratic system works? Why, I'd be happy to explain it in tremendous detail beginning now! Okay, I think that warded him off. That thing growing out of my hat has a name. Royam. He's much more... Um, self-assured than I am. Which normally would be great, but the things he's doing... I don't know if I can support them. Well, for starters, he's wasting precious time and people on this upside-down project. Secondly, he is bat-dung mad as a hatter and he freaks me out personally. He's my opposite, but at the end of the day, that's the grand thing about Two Town, isn't it? Everyone's got their other half. It's just like breathing to us. Mostly like breathing. I'm... I'm afraid not even. Despite my title, I'm in no position to help you. But... Well, if you dared, you could try talking to Royan directly. I shouldn't even be mentioning his name. But, well, you need my help, and this is all I can do. I suspect he knows more than he lets on. I'm lowering an elevator for you, even. It's your choice. And good luck. Greetings, my name is Royan, and I'm in charge. You know I'm the boss because I'm so... Uh... I was about to say that. That's my rhyme. As mayor, I've got lots of priorities to... Uh, yeah. Stop interrupting me. I almost have it. Ah! Him, the mayor. Don't make me laugh. He's less than the smallest member of my... Ah! Look, you've broken my flow and made me stop rhyming. I'm busy with the construction of my masterpiece, my legacy, my gift to random of that wondrous second moon, and you're interrupting me? What do you want? You want your friend's eyes back, don't you? Good. Very good. There's something you need to know. Here's how this is going to go. There, you see? My rhymes are getting better. I'm struggling with my poem about the moon, and I'd like to have it done real, real quickly. You know what? That gives me a thought. Here's my offer. Take it or leave. Bring me a perfect poem about the moon, and I'll grant you Seymour's eyes. Ah, oh, you are good. Yes, that's the deal we have struck. Go find rhymes and I wish you... I'll think of it eventually. Get to it before I change my mind. It's only temporarily that our interests are... parallel to each other. Farewell, young stranger, and let me give you some advice well earned. Stay out of my way and you won't get... Cooked. It was a mad quest for an insane, upside-down mayor. But it was all even had to go on. There were some particular propaganda posters hanging on the walls. Perhaps those could be of inspiration.
a disgrace! I was pinned down by those, those vile machines, but now they're scrap. <laughs> so thank you. The name's Big Red. Even, huh? Well, you're Big Even to me now. Big's an honorific, you know. Big Red and Big Even. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, kid. And now that I can move freely again, I think I'm gonna head back down to Two Town. You've really made a difference in my life, Big Even. Oh, please, take this. It's my way of saying thanks. I'm finally free! They said it wasn't possible. They said it was a lie. Meet Miss Mystique from Papo's Wild Circus, the woman with three personalities. Hmm. Miss? I could use that word. A feast for the senses, a balm for the body, a spiritual bouquet? You simply have to try Crazy Cryptid's Chopped Cheese Blue. Now half price every second Tuesday. Huh. Spiritual bouquet. It's a nice turn of phrase. There. Even had all the materials she needed to face Royam in a battle of rhymes. But did she have the skill? There was only one way to find out. She wasn't sure if she was ready. But on the other hand, she wasn't at all certain she'd ever be. So she did the only thing she could. She went for it. This is it, even. It all comes down to this. If you come at me with a moon poem, you'd better not. Perfect, yes. Let us begin. We shall pluck the wings from painted butterflies to fan the moonbeams from two towns. Yes. Oh, I like that very much. Let's proceed. And we shall be made minions of the moon to look forward to everything the mayor doth. Yes, there's no rule that says a poem can't talk up the poet some. Well done. Now, last verse. And we shall always swear by the two moons, for they change each day. The upside down town is the only place that offers such a... Such perfect rhymes. For a perfect moon. I think... I think I have it, yes. Well done, little poet, you have earned yourself quite a boon. I grant you access to the second moon's staging grounds. Few have ever had the good fortune to tread on that hallowed ground. Go there, admire it, and then I will give you what you seek. Beautiful, I guess, in its own sort of strange way. So this was the famed second moon, Mayor Royam's masterpiece. It was actually kind of a trap. Roll your dice and lead the playing piece into the structure of the Royam's second moon. That can't be right. The playing piece is blocked by an adversary. Defeat the adversary to advance.
see. Even had a feeling she had broken the moon, and that, somehow, Mayor Royam wasn't too happy about that. Feeling confirmed. Even what did you do? At one moment, Royam was a part of me, overseeing the construction. And in the next, he torn himself free and went off howling at the moon. There's no saying what he's capable of now that he's free from my influence. Then it is very good luck for us, dear child, that you escaped with your life. Be very careful, even. I don't know what happens next. We're in uncharted territory here. Whatever you do, be careful. Oh, hello there, even, you little monster. Royam. You come here into a town full of strangers, and the first thing you do is destroy my beautiful moon? Oh, even you've made me very angry. Look, if you'll just give me the eyes, I'll... Oh, these eyes? You want me to give them to you? I'm not giving you anything, child. But you promised! When I gave you rhymes, you said I earned them. And oh, you have earned something. Take a deep breath, even, because it's the last thing you'll ever take from anyone. Foolish little girl, you're going to lose because I rhyme tight when I follow my... <laughs> personified force of creativity? I was going to say that. Quiet! Stop robbing me of my rhymes before I get to them! Only I may ride this lyrical flow, got it? Russia! <laughs> Time to rhyme, Battle. I hope your loved ones are ready to cry, because in a few moments you're going to... Dang it, that is good! Handle this one. You thought you were a knight, but you're a knave, and I'm gonna send you to an early, uh, early death hole. I was getting there. I was gonna get there in one second. I'll try to not let it go to my head that I'm the reason you'll soon be resting in peace. This is the rhyme that's going to end your time here in random. My parents wanted me to be a goat herder, but I'd much rather be an even... Uh... Silence! I was going to think of that eventually! It's not fair! Ah! 
Colossal and terrifying upside down mayor was now stored inside a different and nicer mayor's head. Even and Dicey had done an excellent job, and I was doing an excellent job narrating it. Not that they'd ever realize. Even was learning the world was even stranger and more threatening. Than in the stories her mother told her. But she was also learning that she didn't have to face it completely alone. Now, all Even and Dicey had to do was return the eyes to Seymour. With his vision restored, he'd be able to give Dicey his third pip, which would be all they needed to open that infernal, mysterious gate to Three Town. They'd made it. Even and Dicey had survived, and what's more, defeated Royam, the dark side of the mayor. But the journey was far from over. Sorry, I, I'll be quiet now. Yeah, I just get so carried away sometimes. It, it's just so exciting being a storyteller, you know? <laughs> okay, okay. Now, I'll be quiet. Hey, what happened? I heard a ruckus. Long story. But you've got your eyes, Seymour. Oh, my peepers and weepers. Oh, I've missed you so much. <laughs> oh. Ah, much better. <laughs> and as for those pips, if you don't mind, it just takes a little precision, the utmost finesse, and... <laughs> Done! Good as new, little buddy! Well, I wish you well on your next adventure. And, uh, if I could give you some semi-solicited advice, every roll of the dice matters. But not every roll counts. The girl was a long way from home, about to enter the Land of Three. Who knew what adventures awaited her there? The answer is me. I do. I'm the narrator. But for Even and Dicey, the adventure was just beginning. And Even's sister was still out there, somewhere, lost in random. Home, I guess. Don't touch that! You mustn't ever touch that odd. Ever! Never touch it again. Of course, you could never break anything I've built. Nobody could. But you could inconvenience me. And you never want to do that. Anyway, forget it. Because... I have something for you, Art. Something special. Go on, try it. I had it made just for you. Above Even was one of the Queen's royal spiders, 
the kind that had taken away Arn. On that terrifying night, they were the collectors of children who were to become Sixers. Hurry! She's in our sights! Not today, Spider Monster! I always knew I was a Sixer at heart. I knew! I'll do all sorts of important work for the Queen while Bernard mops the floor. Uh, hey, where is Bernie? <gasps> Bernard is gone! <laughs> a Sixer child is missing! I repeat! <laughs> We should help him. He'll be eaten alive out here. Mm, the spider seemed impossible to get into at the moment. Oh, but perhaps Bernie would know how to get to her sister. Even knew. Come on, we've got to find him. Oh, yes, yes. Time was of the essence. I was done anyway. The district tearing itself apart in a three-way civil war. A murdered father. Three siblings, each suspecting the other of the deed. It's and a giant battle droid, given to each by the Queen to settle the matter. Fascinating. Fascinating. The attack has begun! The king must be saved! I am Nishka, and I'm... I'm... I... I, I used to protect somebody important, I think. A ruler, maybe? Before the war. Oh, even, you sweet child. You can't keep clinging to the past. The king's dead and gone now for years, don't you remember? What? How did you know my name? What? I've never seen you before in my life. The king! Protect the king from danger! <laughs> oh boy! Uh, I can't wait to get back home! Uh, uh, but I can't get back home without knowing the way. Or can I? Oh, <laughs> hey, mister. Uh, do you know the way to one... Uh, oh, wow. Uh, you want a hug? Uh, uh, okay. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Wow, it's, it's pretty cold in here and dark, too. Hey. Are you the sh Shadow Man? Oh, I have many names, little one. Okay, fair enough. Uh, have you seen a little boy? About yay high? Let me think. Uh, this one? Oh, 
wow, even is that you? I'm so glad to see you. Can you believe that I'm stuck? Let him out! He's mine now. I won't be letting him go. I believe you'd call that leverage. That remains to be seen. But people only truly fear things that move in the dark during peace. During war, they are surrounded by greater threats all day long. And so nobody fears the Shadow Man anymore. Life is the greater horror. And they have overindulged, forgotten me. If you want me to give you Bernard, then I want you to change that. I've watched you. I know you're a dice wielder. You alone carry the power to affect the arenas and those giant robots. Figure it out, or you will never see your precious Bernard, or any other child I choose to take again. Without peace, there will be no boy, no hope, and you will never see your sister again. Come to me when you meet success, but don't take too long, for little Bernard does not have that much time left. To save Bernard from the wretched Shadow Man, even had to end Threedom's civil war. It was a hard task, an impossible task, but she wasn't going to let her friend die. The first thing she needed was information. Perhaps some of the locals would be willing to share what they knew. I remember you. We've spoken before, haven't we? No, I don't... I don't remember much, and... I'm sorry, what did you want? Oh, with the children. The three children. They... They... Well, something happened. There were sounds from his chambers. Was someone with him? I was his bodyguard, and I ran to look, and he was supposed to be sleeping, but... But... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just... It was such a shame, such a... Uh, I'm sorry, I, I forgot what we were talking about. Hello? Do I know you? I'm sorry. I'm afraid... I'm afraid that these days I don't remember things as well as I used to. I have moments where I can see things so clearly, and then... Poof. But there have been times where an object reminds me of things. Holding an important artifact that reminds me of a person, or an event, that could bring it all back. Can you find these objects for me? One for each triplet. That could bring it all back. Oh! And if you could find the murder weapon that killed the king, I could remember that too. I feel certain of it. That platform reminds me. I'm supposed to warn travelers about something. I'm supposed to say something very, very important. Oh well, it's probably fine and we should all stop worrying about it. at which Dicey affected the world, even was surprised to find herself feeling a little bit frightened of him. How could someone so small and innocent contain so much untamed power? And now, 
even suddenly felt like she had the world on her shoulders. Could she solve the mystery of the king's murder? It's the Count, ladies and gentlemen. The Count has won the role. Someone has entered your ruin at uh, castle, your grace. <laughs> I swear, it must be my bloody sister, the Baroness, or my fancy pants brother who thinks he's so much better than me, <laughs> sending their assassins to smother me in my sleep. But this count is awake and ready for you! You hear that, assassins? Here to kill me, aren't you? Help me to die? End it? How can you end it when the Colossus has already moved more than once today? This war is only heating up. What's wrong? Everything! My bodyguard is dead, the war goes poorly, and then well, and then poorly again. And on top of that, Count Shmoo has been kidnapped! Nishka, the only one I could trust besides my father. She disappeared when he was killed, but you're in no shape to replace her, child! She was the whole family's bodyguard! She was great! Or so I thought until she let one of us, not me, kill my father! Of course! Obviously, I would keep track of that. Someone took it. A little bird whispered that it's locked up in the head of the broken colossus that used to be my father's. It should be collecting ashes somewhere in the battlefield. Why? Was someone going to use it to assassinate me? Well, good. Even if she's alive, that leaves my lands undefended and myself open to assassination. Ha! It'll never happen. The third of his name, yes. He was stolen from me by the vicious Baroness, my meanie of a sister. Shmoo is like a son to me, and I haven't been able to sleep since he was taken. Do this for me, and I shall give you something. Hmm? How do you like that? So that's the deal. Find my plushie, and I'll give you... Um... Hmm. Well, I don't know what I've got like that. Oh, but I do have a finger taken from the scene of the crime of my father's murder. Tis yours if you recover Shmoo for me. Deal. The Count was an odd duck, and a paranoid duck too, come to think of it, but even was now one step closer to triggering Nishka's memories, and possibly, just possibly, ending this war in freedom.
burning daylight even. And I don't think I like what I see. Indeed we do. But you'd better. The boy is growing cold in here. Let's hope it's time you have, young even. Oh, Shmoo, you're back! You lovable little scamp! I should scold you. You had me worried to death! Oh, but I can't stay mad at that face. By the card makers, Count Shmoo the Third! You're back home with Daddy! You've done good here today, noble child. You've returned my Shmoo to me. Which is just about the exact opposite of assassinating me. I'm forever in your debt. And now let me give you this finger. It's yours. I hope that, with it, you can uncover the truth of my father's murder. Okay, fare thee well. Thanks for not killing me. And watch out for assassins! Even had returned Shmoo to the Count. And in return, gotten a very sinister black finger in exchange. It seemed to be made out of living shadow. She was very curious as to what Mishka would remember when she saw it. Sir, a thousand apologies, sir, but your mid-afternoon cake was burnt in the chef's oven. A cake flambe? <laughs> oh, how delightfully decadent. I'll take the whole thing. <laughs> But, sire, it's burned to a crisp. Ooh, a new flavor I haven't experienced for years. <laughs> what an amusing diversion. Have Chef serve it to me at dinner, and if he refuses, kill him. And then yourself. <laughs> yes, sir. The Duke certainly lived in style. Oh, it was all a show. And the horrors of war did sometimes bleed through the artifice the Duke had constructed. But if he ever noticed it, he certainly never let it show. Hello, darling. You're a long way from home, aren't you? No, no, darling. That's not how you address a superior. In this kingdom, whenever you meet someone of a higher station, you must always begin by saying, Begging your forgiveness, sir or madam. There you go, darling. Now go on, run along. Well, I never. Look at you. You're the spitting image of an unskilled laborer. Perhaps a chimney sweep? Child, child, no. You simply can't address people this way. You must always use their titles. For example, I am to be addressed as my most esteemed lady, and the Duke is your Imperial Majesty, rightful Lord of Freedom. Without the right titles, none of us can possibly be expected to respond to you. It's a simple matter of respect. You're very welcome, little lady. A pleasure to make your acquaintance, child. Look at you, child. Why, you might as well be dressed in rugs. Who are you? And what brings you here? Oh no, child. That is not how you introduce yourself in conversation. You must always curtsy first. Oh no, heavens no. You want just a slight bob at the end, child. It's always so unseemly when a lady goes down too far and then snaps her head up like a... a drinking bird. Here, like this. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, yes. Perfectly wonderful. You... You may approach. Yes. So. Oh.
Well, well now. Finally, some respect around here. <laughs> well met, Lady Evelyn. What brings you to the company of the Duke, the one and only rightful ruler of freedom today? Shmo, the Count's dreadful plush thing? Heavens, I can scarcely recall what we did with it. The Baroness launched it into our territory a few moons back. Heaven knows why. I suppose he would say that. I suppose she did. My soldiers found it during one of our training marches. I thought it would destabilize him, perhaps lead us to victory, but no, it just made him shriller. We can hear him sometimes, you know, even over the chamber music. <laughs> oh, I remember now! When I realized it was useless, I had Shmoo thrown in the cellar of the old castle dungeon. The castle is long gone now, replaced by a battlefield. But the basement may still be out there somewhere. He's yours if you want it. I have no use for something so depressingly pedestrian. <laughs> Our old bodyguard. Oh, heavens, what is there left to say? She protected us until she didn't. And my dear father paid the price. I haven't heard from her since. She's dead and gone, I suppose. good for her. I should send her a cake. Only, we haven't one to spare. You understand. But no, I couldn't possibly leave the castle. The horrors of war wait outside, child, and I can't have my people remembering them. No, no, out of the question. I have only your word that she's even alive, and we've just become acquainted. Then again... All right, I, in my infinite wisdom and appetites, have decided to do you a favor. I will give you something of extreme value if you will in turn do me a favor first. There is a portrait of me here. Certainly, you've noticed my beauty, my handsomeness, my re demeanor. <laughs> oh, I am there with my father, his favorite child. However, part of the painting is missing. When we split our lands after my father died, the Count took control over the old royal nostalgia. I'm sure the second half is there, and it proves that I was father's favorite. Return with it to me, and you shall be rewarded. Try it soon. 
when his body is, at last, as cold as mine. Oh, is that what I think it is? Yes, yes, this is the piece. And don't I look dashing. It was my pre-wig period, mind you. But I, well, wait a minute. We're all sitting in his lap, but, but that means Daddy loved us all equally? <laughs> ah, well, I suppose I did, even if the painting was a disappointment. Here, have this worthless thing, worth a fortune to a commoner like you, and I'll hardly notice its absence. And don't let anyone say the nobility isn't as kind as it is cake-filled. With a memento of the Duke in her hands, Ivan was one step closer to being able to trigger Nishka's memories of that fateful night. The Baroness lived atop Wild Card Hill, a training ground for war and a home to warriors. It was not a place for children. But then again, thought even, what part of freedom was? Interlopers find themselves dead long before this point. Ha! A likely story. You must have just snuck past them. Blind chance. At ease, child. Well then, at ease, even. Look at you. You're not even old enough to be a recruit. You're soft, aren't you? No, I suppose you're not. You're learning! But you are a long way from home. One or both of my brothers defeated our bodyguard and killed our father. I don't let that stand, soldier. So I fight. And when I win, they will pay for their transgressions. Not surprised. Nishka's damn tough. And if anyone could survive out there, it's her. She taught me how to win a fight. Taught me how to never surrender. Taught me the importance of duty. No, that would be a dereliction of duty. She wouldn't be happy to see me there, and neither would I. I respect us both too much for that. How is she, other than alive? Impossible! I am too busy waging and winning this war. Ha 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 A child coming here and asking for a gift? The sheer gall. But I admire the courage. Tell you what, even. I happen to own the mighty mechanical arm that once belonged to Nishka. If you can take it, it's yours. Certainly. Like I said, all you have to do is take it. This arm, it's only the most heavily guarded item in my entire freedom. I like your spunk, even, so let me warn you. You will fail. You may even die. So do the smart thing and go back to whatever teapot shack you came from. <gasps> Even knew what she needed to do to get something that would jog Nishka's memory. Win the most protected treasure in the most militarized kingdom. She knew it would be hard, but she also knew that the chance of ending this war, if indeed she could end it, would be worth it. Finish this 
satisfied by destroying the tower? To destroy the tower, you must lead your plague peas onto the appropriate tile in order to fire your cannon. Shoot the button to fire the cannon. to fire the cannon. No. Impossible. You can't have it! Give it here! Huh. Turn about is fair play, I suppose. You have a future in my militia, even. Very well. Keep the arm. And if you see Nishka, tell her. Never mind. Just treat her well. She's earned that, at least. Armed with Nishka's... arm? Even had all she needed to remind the old bodyguard of the Baroness. She just hoped it would be enough to change the course of this war. Even noticed her small companion looked like he had something he wanted to say. I don't think you will. You get a three from 
distant beauty of it. From looking more superior in the eye and refusing her. But that superior is to the patient of the mom. Lock the gown in to destroy yourself and her. talking about again? That finger, it reminds me of something. It was the fight with the, the king, and he, and I, and we... Ugh, I, I'm afraid it's gone. But it's become clearer. Bring me more. I need more to remember. What were we talking about again? Oh, that portrait. Of the children, the triplets, and their father, their poor father, the king, killed, killed while I, while he, uh, I can't remember. I need more, more objects to jog my poor memory. What were we talking about again? My arm. I remember. I wore this. I used this to help defend the king when he... On that night when he... But then it... Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Please bring me more objects. I'm so close to remembering. I can feel it. What were we talking about again? By the dice maker. I remember this. It came for us so quickly, so savage, we couldn't... Ah, it's on the tip of my tongue and then it's gone. It's... Yes, even. You've... You've done it. Seeing them all together, I... I remember everything. Oh, by the dice maker, you've saved me. Which one of you pranksters rang the bell? I knew it was a trap! Assassin! Oh, trap! Ah, shush, children! Niska! You're alive! You should all be ashamed to have disgraced your father's beloved freedom so, and how proud he was of you. But bloody this is just not how he raised you. <laughs> Listen. I was there that doomed night when your father was murdered. And Nishka the bodyguard recounted vividly what had happened that night. It was a tale of a god lady gone awry, of a blade against mechanical arm, and of a cold-blooded murder. I was going to roll my dice. Well, that's how fights were done in those days. But this murderer didn't play by the rules. My trusty arm was cut off. I returned the favor and tore off the perpetrator's finger. And that perpetrator was the Shadow Man. Busted. Bernie! Oh, hey, even there you are. I should have been there to guide you all. I went mad with guilt for failing your father, and I ran away. I am so sorry. Ahem. Uh it appears that this war... Might have been for naught. 
This war was all because you three never talked to each other? You people are the worst! Thanks for the outfit, Bernie. You think you'll be okay now? Sure thing. I can find my way home to one cross with my eyes closed. Easy peasy. Don't worry, even. I'll make sure he gets home. And good luck to you. Uh, I'm not good at goodbyes. Say hi to Odd. Oh, I almost forgot. You like pips, right? This is all that was left of Mr. Shady when you poofed him. Weird, huh? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Hey, hey, guys. All right. <sighs> Here goes nothing. But I ate too much candy. doing here what does it look like I'm nanny Fortuna's favorite so I'm the most important kid yes it is good for me I always knew I was a sixer and finally the rest of the world is acting like it honestly some of the kids here you can put them in a sixer uniform but you can't change who they are and wait a minute even? Even! It's me, Lucky from One Town! What are you doing here? From what? We're gonna be sixers, even! For real! Who'd want to be saved from that? Wait a second. You're not even 12 yet! You're too young to be here! You're an imposter! No, you listen, even. I rolled the quince dice to get here, and you're... You're a cheater. You don't belong here. You're an imposter. You're an imposter. I'm telling. Nanny. Nanny Fortuna. Nanny Whoa. Fortuna. What? No! Hey, dice. Impossible. The queen destroyed them all. Where did you find that? Tell me. No. Tell me where my sister is, you witch! Oh! <laughs> you are the sister, aren't you? All alone, far from home. <laughs> <laughs>
your own good, Wanna. Two sisters, both alike in dignity. But within one woman lies dark malignity. Fun and games till one is gone. Some creeping darkness lately spawned. to change the past, new rules to make the present last, death and ruin for those who oppose. As went the sister, so the whole world goes. I... I, I don't think I can do this. You can. And you will. The sacrifice is necessary. But I don't want to. The dice demands it. Sometimes we must set aside what we want in order to get what we need. Push her over, Odd. Push her over. Or I'll let the dice decide whether you should take her place! Odd, please. I'm sorry I was mean to you and your sister. Odd, please, you can't do this. You can't. You're running out of time, Odd. had to find her missing friend. She gathered her courage, squared her shoulders, and... I just want to go home. <sighs> and realized that she just wanted to go home. Oh, but home was very far away. She had no idea how to get there. when you need it. Dicey? Dicey, Dicey. Even found herself approaching the edge of Forberg, or rather, the silent remains of that once glorious city. 
The Queen had torn it to pieces during the war. Years ago, in her mad search for... something. The only trace of it at all were the ruined and lifeless stones, shrouded in fog, lost to memory. To even, it was like an impossible vision. Something she could scarcely believe. A rebuilt fort town, squatting by the ruins of what came before. A city without history. But who called it home? Send to you for the first time on the casino main stage a real live dice. Dice! Dice! What manner of destruction will it unleash upon these fighting grounds? What rules and norms will it tear asunder as its true power is finally unleashed? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> when I roll them bones! Why isn't it doing anything? Come on, give it a kick! <laughs> Worthless! Dicey! I'm not leaving here without you, Dicey. Leave him alone. This dice is under my protection. Ah, what a fine job you've been doing of it too. But I am always up for a gamble. And gentlemen, the death match is about to begin. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it appears that this wasn't even a dice after all. What we have here is just a broken old jack in the box. <laughs> He's mine. Give him back. You want this garbage back? Yes, and he's not garbage. Well, go get it. <laughs> Dicey! Oh, in double. Oh, and look, that's precisely the bread I made on myself. Dicey! Oh, no! No, no, no! <gasps> Dicey! Oh, Dicey! I was so scared! I'm sorry, I'm so sorry! I didn't mean to get you hurt. I should have never put you in danger. We don't belong here and I just... I just want to go home. Did someone say, smuggle me home? Because you, little lady, are in the presence of Ludo Betts, the greatest person smuggler in all of Random. Y you trust me, right? 
Smuggler, runner, pirate, pathfinder. It's all the same thing, just with a different coat of paint. And I'm the best there is at doing it. You see, I've got my bag. Top of the line, nothing so fine, purely benign. It's bigger on the inside. Me and my brother can fit anyone inside. Ah, well, oh, sorry, I mean I can. My brother, Bruno, I lost him to the high roller, who I'm betting you know. We gambled, we lost, and now he owns him. And you, well, you've got yourself a real dice, which means you have a real chance to free Bruno. Do that, and I'll be real motivated to do you a favour in turn. Because you don't have enough pips. Any fool can see that. Look, the high roller seems all high and mighty, but he's got a weakness. It's in his name. Roll a higher number than his and he'll lose everything. You just gotta fix your dice up. Oh, sure. Good luck with that. Without me to guide you, you'll be lost and eaten in hours. Fix your dice and beat the high roller. Then you'll save Bruno, and I swear on my eyes that I'll let you inside my bag. And me and my brother will take you anywhere you want. Anywhere. Even had no idea where she could find more darts for her dice. So she fell back to exploring. It had gotten her this far, at least, which, if we're being precise, is to a point where she no longer wanted to explore. Uh, look, uh, life's complicated sometimes. I won again? <laughs> Talk about beginner's luck. Seymour, what are you doing here? Hey, even! <laughs> Sorry, guys, I, I got a bounce. <laughs> My friend, it's good to see you. Made it to Forberg, huh? Hey, how goes the brave quest? I'm... I'm heading home, Seymour. But I don't see your sister with you. She's... Uh, I, I don't know what I'm doing anymore, Seymour. I'm, st I'm starting to think I don't even know who Odd is. Maybe I never did. Maybe it was a mistake to look up to her. To anyone. We all just... We all disappoint other people, don't we? And here I am disappointing you. Hmm. All right, so you want to go home. Let's start there. You are certain about this? That just tells you you're alive. Life's a roll of the dice, right? It's okay to want to go home. It's okay to feel lost or be lost and to just take things one step at a time. Do you know your way back? I will say this. For a woman who seems so disheartened and pessimistic, you've certainly had a lot of success meeting people and securing passage. Uh, I'd bring you myself, if I could. I'm uh, kinda lost myself. <laughs> One of the Bag Brothers? Yeah, I've met him. Mighty sure of himself, that guy. A little too sure, if you ask me. I heard he gambled away his brother, Bruno. Poor kid. Poor kids. <laughs> Let me guess. You need to get his brother back from the high roller. Yeah? And the high roller only ever rolls fours. So if you could roll a five. Even. Easy, easy. I was just getting that part. Here, pass the little guy over. So we just add in the dots he had in two town. And now the extra dots you found back in three dumb and Ta-da! <laughs> Meet your new improved, more repaired dicey. Now you can roll up to hey oh mm, hey, mm, oh um four, which is still not enough to beat the high roller. Sorry, even. I know where you could find some more dots, but... Uh, forget I said anything. Uh, it's dangerous. There's no guarantee of success. 
fine, fine. Just don't tell her I'm the one who sent you. Even go to the soothsayer tents and ask about Uma very discreetly. It's not a name you'd throw around just anywhere. And good luck. I'm rooting for you. <clears throat> don't get eaten. The bag brother. Yeah, he was a little shifty. But it's not like we have a lot of options, Dicey. Look, do you have a better idea? <sighs> I'm sorry, Dicey. This town is having an effect on me. Look, let's let's do what we can. You don't even know what you're walking into, do you? You have no idea. Uh, hello? Greetings, young one. Can I interest you in a delightful new rug? Uh, no thanks. I was wondering if you could direct me to Uma. Step inside, child. This rug, this rug is very nice. Ooh, it shows real promise, don't you think? Huh. On the other hand, it is still missing some threads. But I have many rugs here. Which ones are you interested in? Ah, yes, the red one. Every time I look at that rug, I think of a poor woman here who loves her partner so much that he's become her whole world, leaving no room in it for herself. Oh, she searches for him near Four Horsemen's Corner. The blue one, a fine choice. <laughs> There are a pair of best friends in this city, or rather, there were, until that friendship was fractured. One of them lives alone near Dicemaker Square. I wonder if that friendship could ever be restored. The purple rug, yes. A personal favorite. You know, the queen, she'd have us believe we're all different, that we need to hate each other. But within us is a light we all share. He is in trouble in one of the foreman's arenas. The future isn't made yet, young one. Weave it to your liking. I can tell you nothing else. You want to find Uma, yes? Then go and keep your dice friend close. Hmm? Ooh, that strange rug seller seemed to know more than she was letting on. Also, I didn't even know she'd be here, so that's weird and spooky. <laughs> For now, even had little choice but to seek out those people she'd mentioned, and hope that when she'd returned, Uma would be there too. I don't know, Dicey. It's like this city is a last resort for everyone here. Well, there was one good thing here, at least. Her dislike of the High Roller is making even more than motivated to find a way to take him down and earn passage and the bag out of here. A game arena is now accepting new challenges. Man, that was the man who'd thrown even in the garbage in Two Town. He was a jerk. And even had to help him all the same. Make your 
way to the top in order to win. Shall return, am I right? <laughs> uh, oh, this is awkward, isn't it? <laughs> hey, Mr. Lunchbox, me old eye poking friend. Well, I'm a fair sight. I'm glad you did. <laughs> After I tossed you aside, uh, you kept on doing things in Two Town, didn't you? And then you ended up destroying the Big Bad Royum. Am I right? So now the Queen's top servant in all of Two Town is dead, and I'm the one who could have stopped you from entering the town, but sort of didn't. So I'm the one she's gonna come after. So I fled, but now I'm here. And life's not great, yeah, and my life started getting worse right after I met you, yeah? <laughs> nah, no, I don't hate you. Honest, I don't. I want that queen gone. And I think you're the one who's come closer than any of us ever did. And I can tell you don't think much of me, and I guess I don't fault you for that, but I'm glad you saved me all the same. So here. I don't have money, but I do have this lucky thread. I have a feeling you could uh, use all the luck you can get. <laughs> See you around, kid. Mr. Lunchbox. Huh. Even had helped someone who'd done nothing but be mean to her and been shown kindness in exchange. <laughs> it's always nice when things work out that way. Even if the reward she was given was a um, short length of unremarkable and apparently useless purple thread. You'd better watch out yourself. That dice you've got could get you some unwanted attention. Hello there. That's a fine dice you've got there. Reminds me of QB. Oh, hi. I did. It it seems like a lifetime ago. Me and QB. She was my dice. We did everything together. Fought for people, too. Not like heroes, but we did good where we could. It was a good life, and, and then the No Dice War came to town. And there was a big climactic fight at the Quarterstone Arena, and, you know, we rolled a... Oh, and we lost. And afterwards, I couldn't face that. Face her. The queen completely destroyed this once majestic town. You can see the rubble now and think you can imagine what the city was like, but, but, but you can't. This here used to be a place of honor and honesty, of music and magic. We rebuilt, but... We lost so much, it, it's not the same. The new Forberg, it's twisted reflection of what was. After that, QB and I went our separate ways. 
I thought so often trying to find her, but as time went on, it just seemed bigger and bigger until... until it was simply too much to apologize for. And so I never have. No, no, I couldn't. I can't. You'd better watch out yourself. That dice you've got could get you some unwanted attention. How? Find QB, enter the arena and win the fight I never could. It'd only be a symbolic victory anyway. The Queen's too strong now. But, but it would be a black eye for her. Yes, she hates people messing with her rules. If you could win that arena fight, that would put a smile on my face. You know, I don't even know your name, but I like your attitude. And if you do decide to face that arena, then I wish you luck. Have you won the fight? And you're here and you're alive so clearly you won the fight, which is incredible. The Queen's reaction when she finds out, oh, this brings a huge smile to my face. How do you do it? Oh, oh no, no, my poor little girl. I should have been there for you. She was always the best of us. I... I should be more like her. I'm going to bury her. I'm going to give her peace. And then I'm going to make peace with my own past too, you know? I can't forgive myself for my mistakes, but I can learn from them. That's what she would have wanted. Not... not for me to be sad, but to celebrate our friendship. To celebrate what it stood for. Here... I want you to have this, a friendship bracelet that QB made for me once. I... I think she would have wanted you to have it. I don't need blue thread to remind me of what we shared. She lives in me now. And if I could give you some advice, the bond you and your dice share, it's important and the friendship will define both your lives. Don't let anyone keep you apart. You belong together. Even had brought closure to the old dice wielder, and in doing so, given him new motivation for his future. The blue thread in her hand seemed to pulsate with warm magic. It was oddly comforting, actually. Have you seen my boyfriend? He's perfect. Obsessed? Who wouldn't be? His hair like the hair of the gods, and his cheeks like the cheeks of the gods, and his shoulders. 
Oh, precisely. The man is perfect. I think about him all the time. Nothing, only him. It's because we're in love. Have you seen him? Last I heard, he wants to challenge one of the foreman's game arenas. But that seems like days ago. Could you deliver a message to him for me? You're a peach. Tell him I love him and that he's perfect. And if he wants ground steak for dinner, to let me know so I can start preparing the fixing. But if he wants chicken breasts for dinner, I can do that too. But just let me know so I can start preparing the fixing and ask him what he wants me to wear tonight. And tell him if he doesn't like my hairstyle to just let me know and I'll get it cut before he gets home. Okay, you've got all that? I need to be his own person. Okay, bye. Thanks for delivering my message. as you can into the hole in order to lower the ladder and get to your goal. star my prince a letter let me see dear oh he calls me dear and then he goes on to say that the longer uh that the longer we were married the more i became just a reflection of him and he a reflection of me he goes on to say that i'm not the woman i fell in love with and he's not the man he used to be either. And that we both deserve better. We deserve to be full people. He then says this isn't healthy. That he needs to find time apart to rediscover who he is. And he hopes I do the same. Oh, oh no, he's gone. He's gone and he's not coming back. I've lost everything. want me I want him but then again maybe all hope isn't lost maybe if I did what he said if I try to figure out who I am when I'm by myself if I rediscover who I used to be and truly am and break free of obsession and idolatry and become a fully realized person again then maybe he'll take me back it's the right one for me Yes, I can do this! I can achieve self-realization for love! Let me give you this. It's a red band. I was going to give it to him, but I want to give it to you instead. For all your help. And when you look at it, you can remember me and him and us. Oh dear. <clears throat> well, even had helped a lovesick woman realize she was worth more than just idolatry. And the red thread she'd been given must have a use somewhere, right? Ah, you've returned, young one. How does fate find you today? Let me see, young one. Ah! The purple thread from your enemy. You have a dice, and you have to decide what you'll do with that power. 
and you saved someone who'd done you harm, didn't you? Oh, it seems to me, at least in that moment, you thought everyone might deserve a second chance. Hmm? And this blue thread from the two friends. Not a happy story there, with a friendship and a dice both dead. But there's some joy in it, too, isn't there? The old dice wielder made peace with his past, and in doing so, found a new motivation for the present. And this red thread from the woman in love. One can never fully depend on someone for one's own happiness. Isn't that true? We can't lose ourselves in someone else. We have to be our own people, no matter how much we idolize someone. Well, enough of that. Let's see what happens when these threads combine. <laughs> ah, look at that. How beautiful it is when the weave comes together. <sighs> You're a long way from one town, young one. You are lost, but you haven't realized yet that your story goes on whether you care or not. Look, um, I'm glad you like your rug, but I'm, I'm really just looking for someone named Uma. If you are so certain that is what you want, look here. Closer. But it's just a rug. I don't see anything. Sometimes to see things as they truly are, we must look within. Long ago, in the land of Random, there was a wonderful witch and a terrible queen. And everyone had a dice with which they could control their destinies. The witch, with her magical dots, gave every dice tremendous power. It was chaotic, but fair. Horrible, but beautiful. It was life. But sometimes there were disasters. One day, a new queen came to power, and she decreed her dice should be the only one. The queen hunted down all the dice in random, tearing them from their wielders. It was a war, and she won, but still she was not satisfied. She turned against the witch. So desperate was this queen to find and control the secret valley from which all dice came. The queen destroyed Forberg, searching for her, but the wonderful witch was clever, and she escaped to her dice's valley, shrouding her way behind her. To this day, the witch stays hidden, and the queen searches for any sign of her, for they both know she will one day return and help the dice wielders do the same. Questions. 
your kind is so small, and your life so short, it does sometimes feel silly to learn them. In the before times, I produced the pips for the dice of old. Every dot on them came from me, and it gave them great power. There were many of us then. The Queen killed us all. All except me. Because I hid. For years. Decades. And now you dare to disturb me. Did I? You are worthy of keeping some of my children. That's you, Dicey. If only to cause that horrible queen some headache. She hates that there's another dice in random, and I love it. Only if you believe her to be... What is it you want? You and she are like two dots on a dice, but it's yet to be seen if you share a face. You've been having dreams, even. But they only show you part of the future. Dreams and destiny are woven together. But all is not as it seems. The last dice has not yet been rolled. You were lost here. Lost in random. But a fact remains. Sometimes... You have to lose your way in order to find your way. I will give you the dots you and Dicey need. Your eyes are closing. Your eyes are opening. <gasps> Thank you, Uma. Oh, you're here! You're safe! Oh, I'm so relieved. Well, little, but it's a good surprise. It's just... It's usually a 50-50 chance Uma eats a visitor. She must have seen something in you she liked more than just the marrow in your bones. <laughs> And you've got the pips! But with this, I can give Dicey a mighty five! All you need to enter that final arena to battle the foreman and his high rolls! Are you ready? Before you answer, know that things might get, uh, dicey? As soon as you have a five? <laughs> <clears throat> There'll be no going back. So you tell me, kid. Do we do this? Or no? High five. Okay. Just gotta add the pips. Easy. Easy. And... A five. Read it and weep, slime face. And that entitles me to a gamble. I lose, you get my five. But if I win, I get Bruno Betts. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard the little girl. She wants to gamble. She thinks all she needs is a dice to beat me. I had a nightmare last night, you know. I lost a bet, but when I woke up, 
I knew that was impossible because the High Roller never loses. I won't have mercy on you this time. You've earned my full unstoppable force. I won't have mercy on you, you mean. Insolence. I was going to change a lot of things around here, especially when I forged those picks into my own dice. Give you. That wasn't the deal. I make the deal. Stop it! Just stop it! Please. Please don't! Please! I'll do anything! You can be the poor man! You can you can be the high fire roller! Just don't kill me! Please! Please! Go! You saved him even, and in exchange I promised you a trip through the bag. And Bruno can tell you, I'm as good as my word. Oh, he is that. There, she's all yours. <laughs> There was an awkward pause, and I felt compelled to fill it. Oh, <laughs> 
I know, Dicey. I think we may have made a mistake. Oh, you're new here. I'm sorry. Everything dies here. There's no light, no food. All we can do is die. You don't know the story, do you? Ludo, that may have actually been true. They are brothers, and they weren't always this way. Long ago, they ventured deep into a forest to a place none had gone before. Some say they disturbed some great evil there. They found this bag resting on a stump in a clearing. Or it found them. It's bottomless, you know. But it hates itself. It wants to be full. The bag twisted the brothers. It changed them. Possessed them. Made them hungry for more and more. The bag demanded they fill it with whatever they could find. First dirt, then rocks. But once the bag got a taste for flesh... Look if you want, you'll only find more sorrow. There's nothing that any of us can't... Uh, uh, wh what's that? Oh no. Oh no! They're coming! They're coming!
Over here, even. Even. I'm right here. What's the matter with you, even? I'm right here, even. Come get me. Some rescuer you are, even. You couldn't find me. You left me alone, even. You left me with... With her! And look what you make me do! There's nothing left, even. You're too late. The girl from Onecroft. Who? Oh, this even girl you keep mentioning? Sounds like a made-up name to me. <laughs> Is her first name Get? <laughs> no! Even is her first. Ha! Put him on board my carriage. Her Majesty will know just how to make you talk. Hey, Even. You finally made it. Good to see me. If it really was so good, what took you so long? Right. You take forever to get here and now I'm supposed to just follow you back? Please. You abandoned me even. You left me to sink or swim in a horrible new world. And guess what? I swam. What did you want even? To go on a big adventure? To use me as some sort of... what? Motivation? Some grand excuse. Because from what the Queen's told me, you've been running around in every district just having a great old time while I've been here suffering. <laughs> right. Were you doing everything you could when you were meeting royalty in Three Town? Getting buddy buddy with Two Town's mayor? You've abandoned me even. The Queen's told me all about it. I don't know. Maybe you wanted me to die. You'd have this tragic backstory. You'd be so much more interesting to everyone around you in Wancroft. How poor, brave Eve and tried and failed to save her sister. In a way, I should be grateful. I finally know who I am. Oh no, this is me. I finally know who I am. Can you say the same, Even? I found my home. My true home. Queen's love is tough, but she will never abandon me. You're not taking that away from me. So I don't want to be rescued, okay? I've changed, even. And it's about time you did too. The true dice brings order. The Queen brings order. And you, all you are, is an agent of chaos. I didn't want any of this, you know. Oh, I thought I wanted to save my sister. And then I wanted to go home. But now... I just... I just don't know anymore. Yo! What is wrong with you, girl? Oh, boo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. I'm dead! Boo-hoo! I never got to do what I wanted! That's you! I was doing an impression of you just now. I, uh, I, d I don't... Look, maybe your sister's a lost cause now, and maybe she's not. But if I were teamed up with an amazing dice who have only made more powerful through my adventures, I wouldn't be crying to myself in the back of death boat. I'd be out there kicking evil queen butt, no matter what. You've got a superpower, sis. Don't waste it. Stop her and save everyone. You think I like shuttling dead children to the other side? Because I don't. I got other things I could be doing. You can do this, even. <laughs> so find your courage and dry your tears. Because this looks like your last stop. And hey, happy 12th birthday, kid.
even was back on track, more determined than ever to save whoever and whatever she could from that horrible queen, which is great. That's a story I'm much more interested in narrating. And on the other side of that long abandoned and silent door was Even's destiny, whatever it would turn out to be. towards it with determination. Not in the hand. Oh, get him in the hand. Let's get him in the hand. Ain't nobody come to that gate since forever. Oi, you there. Yeah, you. I saw you. You came through that block gate somehow. That's against the rules, kid. Whole structure's been legally reclassified as a wall, not a door. Oh, not good enough, kid. That's against the rules. Oh, sure. The kid with a dice needs some slack. Please. It's real, isn't it? You've got a real dice there. Admit it. Oh, guards! Guards! There's a really rude kid with a dice here! was bustling with life. Even at this late hour, perhaps the townspeople would have something interesting to share. You're closer, even. Closer than you ever were. Come, find me. I've heard that voice before. It feels familiar somehow. <laughs> I, I must have dreamt it. Had she, though? Well, it was impossible for me to confirm, since we narrators never got to see what's going on inside our characters' dreams. <laughs> Third person, omniscient narrator, my eye. Salutations, even. I am the visionary. And I, you. Or rather, I will. Time is never so linear. I have watched you for a very long time, and I knew you would come here, to me. This all seemed a bit unlikely to even. Or maybe this strange, floaty person was lying. I mean, uh, probably he was. Please, you're not the only one who can see things even can't. <gasps> Never mind, even. I should not have addressed him. Time is short, so I will be uncharistically direct. I am one of the sacred card makers. There were five of us once. There are five still now. We used to make every type of card imaginable. Together, we cared for this part of random, this five tropolis, until the queen banned all dice, and with them the unleashing of creativity. Now we are bound to do the queen's bidding. With your dice, you have the power to defeat the queen and set things right. The rules that have strangled random for years must be erased, and true randomness must return. But... The future moves, changes, 
You are a crisis even, and an opportunity for both sides. I cannot see clearly through the rugweed, but I can tell you this. In order to defeat the Queen, you need a very special card. Find the other card makers, free them, and we will unite to make you a card that will shake the foundations of Sixtopia. We will make for you your dream card. Follow my vision to the second of the card makers, the painter. And take this, it might come in handy. This is, uh, uh, are, are you sure you don't need this? A visionary does not need mere eyes to see more. Now go, I have interfered enough. Uh, right. The visionary seemed credible. Or even incredible. And yes, maybe he could see things that he shouldn't be able to. And yes, that was alarming, but Eva knew the difference between novelty and fear. She pushed on towards the painter. Even and Dicey had set foot in five tropolis. Here, in the magical heart of Random, is where the cards used to shape the very face of the world were made. But it had long since decayed into little more than a cold and dreary factory, used for purposes far less enchanting. I'm busy. And I'm the king of freedom. Now leave me alone. I'm busy. Always busy. That's what they all say. No scram. Listen well, because I'm only going to say this once. I can't help you. You know why? Because the Queen has already won. That means we lose, kid. We lost, and we lose, and we keep losing until she decides she's tired of winning, which is never. Oh, I've seen your coin before. Convinced that you're different, oh, you're special, and that if you could just reach her, you'll fix it all. Heck, I've even helped. You know what happens? You lose hard, and I'm still trapped here, forced to paint mad inventions for the Queen instead of the magical cards I used to love. All that changes is that you die a little sooner than otherwise, and my heart breaks a little more, and I'm tired of it. So no, I'm not helping you. Now if you please, scram! Dicey? Oh my, where did you find that? This, this changes everything. A moment, love. Perfection. For what? Me painting your dream card? Least I could do, child. Frankly, it was a joy to paint something other than a dreadful robot for once. Oh, there'll be heck to pay once the Queen finds out. But you're going to reach her before that happens, won't you? I know you will, love. Your dream card, it's now off to the gluer. He's next in line. An old colleague and a card maker. Perhaps the most important of all. Then go, love. The gluer awaits. Well, the painter had done all she could. Now, even was off to the gluer, who, and I'm going to go out on a limb here, might be in a sticky situation himself. Even found herself moving ever closer to the darkened heart of Five Tropolis. Wherever the gluer was, he was...
I don't know, Dicey. I just suddenly felt weirdly a- alone. In a way I can't explain. If that makes sense. <laughs> Lucky I have you. Oh, I feel like someone just walked over my grave. I've got a bad feeling, Dicey. The foolish girl was far from home. She knew she made a mistake. She felt like it in her forever. I don't know what it is, Dicey. I just feel odd. Tired all of a sudden. I won't give up. I won't give up. The view was as beautiful as it was hopeless. And it underlined the one universal truth. Even could never defeat the queen. She'd sooner topple a mountain with her breath than succeed. The card makers had given her a hopeless task. And the fools just be an effort. Full of sound and fury would amount to nothing. Die right now. Uh. I know, Dicey. I know. I won't give up. I promise. she was. Breathing. She decided to lie down and die right away. Oh. I don't know, Dicey. Just a random bad mood, I guess.
helping Pipsman my glad to be out of there. It took the others so long to send you, lamb. I've never been in such a dreary... Oh, hold on a pip. That's a dice. Charmed, I'm sure. Now, I haven't seen a dice in ages. It does my heart good to see a live one out and about. It really does. Oh, and I'm glad to see you two have stuck together. Delightful. Look, I've been alone for a long time. Now, oh, you've come further than anyone has come before, Lamb. Then, then they've become the manufacturer of a card for you. Knock me down. They have. Oh, I sincerely hope you do, them. I shall help you. <laughs> yes, our last chance. Our last card. Our last heist. Let's do this. Oh, semantics, semantics. Come on, Lamb, don't ruin this for me. There's been precious little drama in my life of late. I need this. You'd be surprised how boring it is in a cell. Why, I'd be bored to death. If I didn't have this glue secreting from my face to entertain me. Oh, better not stick around, Lamb. The alchemist does not like to wait. The view was as beautiful as it was hopeless. And it underlined the one universal truth. Even could never defeat the queen. She'd sooner topple the mountain with her breath than succeed. The card makers have given her a hopeless task. And the fool's sister efforts, full of sound and fury, would amount to nothing. Even was a wish of a thing so weak, filled with so many little, little bones. She climbed higher, mirroring her own hubris, and knew in the depths of her soul that she would fall. May have been a little crazy then, yeah. Oh, but now I found my son, Fiverr, meet. Well, actually, I never got your name, kid. Fiverr, meet even, I'm gonna stop the queen. Even, I'm gonna stop the queen. Meet Fiverr. Well, how'd you end up here, even? Amazing! Me? Why, after the storm killed our ship, I landed in... Well, I don't know where exactly. Someplace strange, far below random. Before I knew it, I'd been sucked up by this tube, dumped outside Forberg, and had to sneak aboard four different craft before I landed on the one that brought me here. Hey, is that why they call it Four Town, you think? Because everything there takes four tries? Maybe so. Maybe so. Even, do you know the Queen? Fiverr, don't be rude. Nobody knows the Queen. But she has a dice. And you said only the Queen has dice. Aye, that I did. 
Oh, but that's not true anymore, is it? <laughs> Hi, Dicey. He can talk? Dice are amazing. Have you really met the Queen? Like, for real met her? Amazing. Oh, son, she's joking. Nobody can take down the Queen. You don't say. It's good to see you again, even. Now, oh, I should have let you aboard sooner. I was afraid of losing what I had. And fear makes you behave like your worst self. But I see now it doesn't get you anywhere. Fear would have kept you in one croft, and kindness brought me back to my son. <laughs> You take care, even. Bye, even. Bye, talking dice. Even was never going to win, and she finally admitted that to herself. She already knew in her heart that her dreams were a lost cause. Oh, I feel sick, Dicey. <laughs> you're right. I know you're right. But I just have this sudden inexplicable sense of dread, you know? Hello? Alchemist, uh, sir? Um, no? I don't know, Dicey. Alchemist is supposed to be here somewhere. It may have looked like he even knew what she was doing, but it was all a bluff. She was going to get mortally wounded any second now. Oh. Jeez! Oh, thanks! I believe in you too, Dicey! There, little one. Can you talk? Have you seen an alchemist around here somewhere? I dare say I have, little one. Every time I look in a mirror... You're the alchemist! Indeed I am, and I'd have thought the visionary would have sent a more impressive champion than you! Ugh, so old-fashioned! <laughs> I'm not impressed. There's a lot more to being a dice wielder than merely wielding dice. I don't suppose you've learnt that yet. Oh, believe me, there's no right foot here. I don't suffer fools or children. You are both! Ah, let me tell you what I do here. I take raw materials, ingredients, tinctures, essences, and use them to enable cards to do what they must. These days, of course, the Queen has us only making her cards, and for that I need only metals. Those are supplied by the garbage shipped from one croft. Ah, you're a wonner. Of course. You and your family's whole purpose has been to supply the raw materials to build the very robots that subjugate the rest of random. Probably very depressing, even enraging, to find this out. All of you, made into unwitting collaborators of the Queen. Well, back up. I shan't have you crying in my office. Now, I suppose you want me to make you a card to use in battle against said Queen. I don't doubt it. The visionary always did move in baffling yet eventually correct ways. Well, you know the Queen dwells in Sixtopia, don't you? Again? Rude! So then you must also know that Sixtopia is cut off from the rest of Random. You can't get there from here. From anywhere. Mm -hmm. 
just that. We can't be reached by anyone in random. You think we'd be cowering here in the ruins of our world if we could reach her and do something about it? Please, think like an adult! How do I... You don't know, but you've been... Ah, but crying out loud, you really are a child! I don't even know you! You're a little kid! I don't see why I should help you do anything! Your sister was taken by the Queen. Then your sister may no longer be recognizable as the woman she once was. And even if she is, she will not want to return. But as for the second half of your quest, it is noble, if impossible and foolish. And yet, and yet the others have helped you. The painter and gluer I could take or leave, but the visionary, he has earned my respect. And if he sees something in you that I don't, then I should trust his vision. Very well. I will help construct your card. Your so-called dream card. Of course you would. You're a kid. But that's not what you'll get. Now, step back. Ah, there it is. Petal timing. Now, give me a lock of your hair. Ow! Please. Magic and science, they both have their costs. Now we need something from your hometown. Now, this was surrounded by its garbage. I don't get a problem. And finally... Perfect! As always, I might add. You're waiting for a treat? Go! You'll get no lollies from me, child! The silly little girl was far from home. And she missed it terribly. She should turn around right now and give up. Oh, I really miss my parents, Dorothy. No, I know, but but I still miss them. Even was horrid and nobody liked her. The end. I don't know what's going on, Dicey. I feel. I feel like garbage all of a sudden. Oh, Dicey, you're pretty great too. Thanks, buddy. Okay, so we allow each fighter in an arena to suggest only one new rule. Come on, Rule Master, you can do this! You're the best, remember? The best! You can do the impossible five times before breakfast. And then the Queen asks for six. Even. Even, yes! Every even roll gets a plus one bonus against every odd roll. That'll... Wait, no. That just turns all even rolls into odd rolls. Oh, never mind. Wait, who are you? You're the one with the card, right? Even something? The alchemist told me you'd be coming. And I'm sorry even with the card, but I've simply got too much to do to help you. Ha <laughs> ha! Help me? Nobody can help me. The Queen insists that everything I do for her be done by me personally. No subcontracting allowed. Look at this. New layouts for her twisted arenas. Do ASAP, of course. New mechanics for the battles due last week, assigned yesterday. Five. Five new robots with complementary battle bot attack structures! And you try telling the queen, or her bloody nanny, or even those deadly three heads, that they ask for the impossible. Ha! I may be an ancient mystic trained in the art of crazy rules more than anyone else in all of history, but even I'm not a god. I've come to accept that now. But does she care? Tell me, does she? Jeffrey, 
everything is important! <sighs> Look, your card has arrived in here somewhere, and I'll get to it when I can. Oh, you've seen him too? What's that bloody cosmic potato come up with this time? Let's take a look at your card. Oh, perfect. Just perfect! As if I didn't have enough insanity on my plate already. Ooh, but then I do love a challenge. So, what the heck? I'll do it. When I'm done, I'm going to send the card to the highest point in all of Five Tropolis. The top of the giant chimney. Ha! You'll be dead in minutes. You need the five of us card makers there with the card if you want any chance of success. Up there, me and the other card makers will imbue the card with all our creative spark. But the ceremony cannot be interrupted. Ethan, just meet us at the top of the smokestack. The card will be there. Assuming this works, you'll have bigger things to worry about real soon. Yes. No. Yes. There. I mean, I guess it could work. Well, what's done is done. Now hurry. I'll be right with you. Treason. Treachery. Falsity. He even had sown the seeds of insurrection all around her. But now, this vile, hateful creature was on her way to discover why she should have respected her equals. And never betrayed her queen. Even Over here! The ceremony begins! There is others coming, friends. Lots of others. Mm -hmm. Keep them back. We need to focus. Giles, cover us! Let's make ahead to the end of this story, shall we? Oh, look at that! It says, Ethan lost and died alone and unloved. The end. I've never seen an ending so accurate, while at the same time also being so deeply, deeply was about to end. All she was doing was playing it. All she was doing was buying herself more punishment. Dreams, child. I have to fall asleep? My dream card. Of course. All I need to do is sleep. Okay, even. You can do this. It's like Uma taught you. Relax. Deep breaths. Relax. Deep breaths. Puppet, and I'm not afraid of you! 
So take your baggage, get out! You'll regret this! You'll all regret this! I'll get my dice! I'll get you! The word you're looking for isn't dice, Your Majesty. It's dice! The dread I've been feeling, it's gone. I don't know. Something's still missing. But Dicey, I know we're moving in the right direction. Whoa. It's not like anything I've seen before. Okay, I don't think they spotted us. This doesn't look right, but it's got to be the place. The Grand Gate to Sixtopia. Huh? What? What happened here? I don't understand. Is this really it? Maybe this is... Like a fake Sixtopia, meant to confuse invaders or something? I don't believe this! Sixtopia is supposed to be this whole wondrous place that grown-ups have been telling us about! Since the day we were born! And it's fake? It's all a lie? What is going on? None of this makes sense! <laughs> What mischief have you gotten yourself into this time? Ha <laughs> ha, it's classic stew. Good morning, lovelies. Good morning, Charles. Why don't you look handsome today? <laughs> oh, heck, I'm just the same old man I always was. But bless your heart for lying, lovelies. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, you're here too, Albert. Hey, ugly. I'm a big, stupid cardboard person, and I'm Charles' least favorite because I'm a mean, stupid idiot who falls apart all the time. Yes, yes, Albert. We're all familiar with your whole deal. Excuse me, uh, Charles? Ha, ha, ha! We've been here for 60 years. You ought to know what's going on by now. Yeah, what gives? <laughs> Though, of course, not much actually does go on here. <laughs> you stand around and I fix you when you fall apart. Easy. Easy peasy. Of course you are, obviously. You're all real here. Oh. What do you mean, I'm not real? Oh, now look what you've done. You've hurt Bedelia's feelings. There, there, Bedelia. Oh, she says mean things. I know, I know. I'm going to talk to her about it, okay? But you're real. We're all real here. No, we're real. If we were fake, could my head fall off all the time? Oh, no, no, no! Don't you dare, Albert! I've had enough of that for today by far! Alone? Ha! I'm surrounded by friends here! <laughs> There's Bedelia, Claude, Claude too, Snuggle Buns, Eight Ball, Big Tony, Little Tony, Average Tony, the hated Albert! <laughs> Boingy Woingy, peanut butter and jam, they're twins. <laughs> Don, Donner, Donnist, Don Ultimate, Don Penultimate, Don Ultra Penult, Don. 
Well, I don't need to tell you their names. We've all been here forever. <laughs> you, you, you don't talk like the others, do you? She sure doesn't. Should we be suspicious, Charles? I'm very suspicious. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's fine to be curious, lovelies. Eh? Yeah, my earliest memory. Hmm. It's when my head first fell off, 40 years ago. <sighs> no, it's when me and Patty Cakes got married. 50 years ago. <laughs> no. No. It was when I was young. Just... Just a child, really. The nanny came for me in that... That... That chariot that walked like a spider. She dropped me here. Told me my only task in life was to take care of these props. She said my fate was never... To be anything more than a forgotten janitor. And then she disappeared, and she never came back. But all I've done for every day of my life since then was live here alone, so profoundly alone, surrounded only by these, these parodies of life, mocking me every hour of every day with their ageless faces and painted on smiles and I <laughs> or so I thought. But then five years into it, y'all started talking to me and you've never stopped since. <laughs> and now you're an old man surrounded by friends who'll never die. Ha <laughs> ha, sure am, lovelies. <laughs> Ain't that a blessing? <laughs> Why, I must be the luckiest guy in the whole world. Woohoo! The nanny? No, not in any way that counts. That's true. Her chariot goes by sometimes, but it only goes up to the tower. Up there. We hear nothing. How can they be so quiet? They're enjoying quiet fun times, Albert, and that's all I will hear on the subject. Then she's playing up in the tower all day long. How lucky. <laughs> uh, wait. Why would the Creed want the nanny to take one of us cardboard cutouts? It's never happened before. Maybe she isn't really a cardboard cutout like us. <laughs> no, she is. She's just lost her mind, that's all. I'm humoring her, see? <laughs> Tell me about your sister, lovely. <laughs> now, lovely, I learned long ago it's best not to make promises to yourself you can't keep. Now, where have I heard that name before? Oh, yes! Odd! The queen graced us with her presence not too long past, and she had a girl with her. Odd, she called her. She wore a white mask, I remember. She looked strange. Strangely happy, yes, as are we all. <laughs> they didn't have time to acknowledge any of us, of course. She's very busy, but they went out that way, right through there. Oh, you're welcome. We all say thanks, don't we? We sure do. It's nice to get company. It's nice to see a new face. It's nice to be remembered at all. And hey, say hi to the queen for me. <laughs> Reminder, I'm here. I'm still here. Ah, it's horrible. My glassy is made out of, I don't know, despair. You D don't get it on you, buddy. This must be it. The tower. 
What's inside there, Dicey? I can just feel it. She has to be. Don't fall. Don't fall. Don't fall. It's the sudden stop at the end that I'm worried about, Dicey. I feel it too, Dicey. You get close to it, and it's like every bone in your body is warning you to keep away. The goo! Almost as like it's living, or used to be alive. <laughs> Seymour! Is that you? Seymour? <gasps> Seymour! <laughs> is he... <laughs> Just resting my eyes. <laughs> Seymour, your eyes. They didn't even make it about a number. They just took all three. I'm gonna get you out of here. <coughs> no, even you can't. There's too many. You'll never be able to. <sighs> what are you doing? Tougher than I knew, even. How did you know Nanny Fortuna caught me? <laughs> Aren't you sweet, even? <laughs> Looking out for old Seymour, even in your sleep. She caught me in Forberg, captured me, tried to get me to talk about you, but I didn't tell them anything, even. Told them my name was Seymour, not Talkmore. <laughs> that's when. That's when she started taking my eyes. But what about you, Even? I, I thought you were going home. W what made you change your mind? Realized what? You've got a good heart, even. The Queen, she's more powerful than you think. And from what I've overheard, your sister has changed. She won't be what you expect. Oh, I'm sorry, even. About all of this, we adults messed up the world and somehow it's been left to you to fix. A child sent to face off against the most twisted and dangerous being and random, and it, it's not right. I'm sorry I can't stop you, even. And I'm sorry I can't help. There is. Whatever's happened to your sister, I, I don't think it's gone all the way yet. Just be careful. There's nothing I can do to help you now, especially given my uh, current condition. <coughs> oh! 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 Thank you. Now, all we have to do is survive Nanny and the Queen and her minions, and we'll fix everything. Let's go! Hey, whoa. Seymour, you're, you're in no condition to fight. You need to rest. I can't let you do it alone. I'm not alone. Seymour, when this is all over, there will always be a place for you in one town. I'd, uh, I'd like that, even. I'm, 
I'm supposed to find someone here. I, I don't know, Dicey. But I know they're here somewhere. You'll never break the spirit of the rebellion. Never. Even's narrator was so close, she just had to keep looking. Some part of Even knew her narrator was close. It was a feeling that went beyond words. Even and her narrator were almost reunited. She was so close. She was so dramatically close. Ah, there you are, my friend. Thank you for the rescue. Now, I can get back to my job of narrating. <clears throat> the narrator said, narratively. Who are you? I mean, weird. Yeah, it's uh, you. There you are. Whoa, 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 wait. You can hear me? Why, I can. I always could. I'm your narrator. And you too, little fellow. It was hard being alone. I felt like half a person, if that makes sense. <laughs> it would be strange if you didn't. I am your narrator, after all. Oh, but it is nice to know when one's work is appreciated. But you can hear me now. And we should make the most of that while we can. One never knows how long it will be until the old authorities reassert themselves. We've got a quest to finish, my friend. And I stand ready to describe it if you stand ready to live it. Let's. Now then, where were we? <clears throat> ah, yes. A girl, her dice, and her narrator were reunited at last. Behind them, the wreckage of all that had stood in their way. Ahead of them, the queen and her minions. He even squared her shoulders and strode forward toward her destiny. No, oh, I thank you. This used to be a beautiful palace, a place of learning, of magic, of... Oh, yes, Dicey. It was also a place of dice. Halls that once echoed with the laughter of children were now still empty and desolate. Oh, right. Except for Even and her amazing friend Dicey, who was... Uh, great, did you say? <laughs> who was, and I quote, great and awesome to the max. The Dark Crystals had appeared in the same age as the castle's fall, but they were not the cause of this destruction, merely an effect of it. There was something much darker here. Way to creep us out, Mr. Narrator. The remains of the castle were quiet, almost serene, but within them still dwelled a great power. Here goes nothing, Dicey. <laughs> Point taken, here goes everything. Look at this place. It is stunning. And it's been lived in recently. We're not alone here, Dicey. Well, the gate was locked. But where was the key? Even wasn't sure. And neither was Dicey. But... But... They had the feeling they could find what they sought if they looked below.
Whoa, she has a fleet of these things. That's concerning. Wait, Nanny Fortuna was coming. Quick, hide! Now, now, hurry up, you scrumptious little children. What does scrumptious mean, miss? It means keep walking and stop asking questions. The one who dies does not like to wait. Where did I put my keys? Not again! be here somewhere. The key even was looking for. She just knew it had to be here somewhere. Ugh, not your most helpful narration, bruv. Okay, here we go. All that remained was to climb the terrifying upper tower and face our destiny. You're not in any danger here. Even? Do you know what happens to a narrator if the person they're narrating dies? Uh, no. Me neither. Oh, but I'm sure it's not good. Two royal girls. Princesses. The two of them were the exact same ages as even and odd. Those masks. Uh, yeah. The Queen's Throne. It is from here that the Queen rules the fate of random with the roll of her dice. But where was she now? This was it. The point of no return. Whatever the end was, even and Dicey were going to meet it. Listen, Dicey, whatever happens next, I just want you to know. Look, I'm I'm not too good with uh feelings and stuff, but I just want to say I've never become best friends with someone faster, and we've saved each other's lives countless times. And uh, well, Thank you, Dicey, for everything. <laughs> right, back at you, bud. Now, let's go kick that queen's evil butt together. Hiding, hiding. Is, uh, is over here good? Hard! Now then, children, inside that black dice is your ultimate destiny. <laughs> Well, if it isn't the one from one town, even was it? Poor girl, you've marched all this way alone, only to find your own end waiting for you. Only I'm not alone, Nanny. And it seems to me that the only end I've been marching towards is yours. <laughs> nice. Such impudence of demands punishment. children long before, and you and your dice means I'll taste narrow once more! Uh, I suppose... It is one's lot in life, when one is a nanny, to suffer doing someone else's hard work 
while they reap all the benefits. <coughs> Eventually, everyone leaves you behind, don't they? And any love they held for you is temporary, transactional. <coughs> I did my job, a child. I followed orders. And none of us would be in this mess now if you'd followed your parents' orders and stayed home. <laughs> then I come back. Such unearned confidence. You know, everyone is so quick to judge her. But the Queen really likes you even. <laughs> well, there's a lot of that going around, child. You're not a popular person here. Now then, run along before you're too late. <laughs> <laughs> well, where are we? I see. Are you seeing this? <laughs> Through that portal? You sure it's safe? <laughs> the opposite of reassuring. But okay. Those poor children. It's it's so much worse than I than I is the black goo coming from their heads, their brains? The black dice is mining those poor children for their nightmares, their darkest dreads, their most agonizing miseries, coalescing them into the dark fuel. The robots, the dark twisting of the arenas, all of it. It's all powered by those helpless kids' nightmares. There are few things more powerful than unbridled fear. This place, it, uh, it feeds on it. It's a sacrifice. Hey, even that's lucky, isn't it? That is her! She's still alive! Oh, then Arj didn't kill her after all. She might not be as far gone as I thought. Oh, Odd. I hope you're okay. Oh, masters of the one true dice. Have my sacrifice has not been ample. Have you not long feasted on paranoia, bitterness, fear itself? Are you not satisfied? Have I not been good to you, my three lords, since that first uh, moment of your stunning? Guess we're stunning. doing this! Ah! Ah! You have given me power over randomness since we first began our exchange, and we have both found it profitable. But I have no heir. And I cannot let this great work falter. I beg you for just one more boon. Just a taste of your power. I wish to share my dominion over chance itself with my successor. Just as I once did to you, this child has proven herself worthy to me. She will please you, just as I have. She will keep up my end of the bargain, 
so that you can keep up yours. My Dark Lords, I beseech you, let my power be shared, and I swear that two souls shall then worship you evermore. Odd, step forward. There's no more time to prepare. No! Odd, don't do it! What? You! I fought across your entire twisted realm to stop you and to save my sister. And that's what I'm gonna do. Come on, Odd. We need to get out of here. Nobody's being held here, foolish even. Odd's free to go, if she chooses. So I should go with you now, even. Because why? You finally deigned to come see me? No, Odd, it wasn't like that. You need to... To what? To understand that my little sister, the one who's always had it so easy her entire wanna life, now thinks she knows what's best for me? Odd. Or maybe you're just jealous that I've grown up and of the power I'm about to receive. Is that it? She chose me, even. It is sad to see such pettiness embodied in someone so young. She's standing between you and your power. And remind me, Odd, what do we do to those who stand in our way? No. We destroy them, my queen. Ah, so we do. I don't want to fight you, Odd. Even you've always been so young. Far too young to see that none of this is about what you want. A stray little dog nipping at my heels. Oh, don't be that way. Put down. knew when to shut one of the Queen's secret passageways. All I know is she hated me poking around it. Then I say it's our best chance. Let's go.
What's going on here? Who is that? I don't know. The Queen never... Don't touch her! Who is this? Why are you holding her captive? It's your sister, isn't it? The one I was to replace. She looks so sad. Frozen at the moment of her death. You know nothing! Nothing! This is none of your business. And neither is that place. You're ruining everything! Everything! And I won't let you! to let her go. No! No! I won't let you die! If she dies, then I've failed. Then all of this was futile. This whole world can burn for all I can, as long as she lives! <coughs> <laughs> Alexandria, I... I'm not worth it. Shh, don't say that. Of course you are. I love you. I love you. Please. It hurts. It hurts all the time. Even when time stops, it's still... <laughs> Let me go, sis. I, I can't wait for you here, but I promise I'll wait for you there. No, don't. Don't. We'll play again, okay? Just you and me. Natalia! Just you and me.
going to happen? Even we could land anywhere in random. We could end up lost. Nah. And as for what happened next, well. 